Hello, this is Dr. Shafai, Dr. J, and I'm going to show you several smoothing methods of forecasting and how to do the computations. I will be showing um, the use of Excel, but similar calculations can be done manually, um, and I'm sure that you will be able to follow uh, through. Um, in the yellow uh, area, uh, we're going to create two month uh, forecasts, uh, moving average forecasts. Here's the data right here, um, and um, this column right here uh, shows the actual data that we have from past months, uh, from January through October. We don't know what November is. All of these methods of smoothing have the capability of making a forecast for only one period into the future. The formulas are such that uh, they cannot predict beyond one period into the future. So November is the only month for which we can make our forecasts. A two-month uh, moving average is a simple moving average of the past two months. So to do that, I can write here it equals average of January and February, and that 105 is the uh, two-period moving or two-month moving average uh, forecast for March. I can copy that through, and you can see that for the month of November, uh, using a two-month moving average, um, our forecast will be 90 in terms of no number of orders per month. Now you might say, why are we doing all of this calculation? If I were to just, um, I'm sorry, um, the, um, uh, the forecast for the month of November is actually 100 right here. Uh, we cannot do this um, uh, for the month of uh, December uh, because we would need the actual values from October and from November in order to make the calculation for December and therefore we can only go one period into the future so we can only make the forecast for November. Now you may ask yourself I could have done that just by averaging the 110 and the 90 from September and October. Why did we go through all this calculation of the prior months of the forecasts? Well the reason for that is because we want to test for accuracy and check forecast accuracy. Error is uh, the difference between actual values and forecast values. So we have here uh, to compute error for a two-month forecast uh, column, we um, take this 100 and subtract from it the forecast that I computed and we get negative 5. So our uh, our um, forecast was um, five units over and uh, higher than what the actual was for the month of March. If I copy that through, uh, you will see that uh, we have um, these uh, error values. But notice that uh, for a couple of the months, like for August and September, now we have uh, positive error and for the rest of the months we have negative and so they might cancel each other out. In order to avoid that, if I were to average all of this column, this negative 0.625 is called bias. But your book talks about mean absolute deviation. And we're going to compute mean absolute deviation here. And that is the, abs the error value taken absolute value of. So if I compute the absolute value of each of these error terms, Um, I get these numbers right here. These are the absolute errors, meaning error is error, deviation is deviation. Whether our forecast was above or below the order uh, for the month, it doesn't make a difference. It's an error. Therefore, the absolute error um, can be averaged to compute MAD. 
and MAD for this model is 25. Now, this little is a two-month moving average. We can go to a three-month moving average. So that would mean I would need January, February, and March to predict April. So I would come to the month of April, and I would average um, January, February, and March. And if I copy that, um, I get these numbers, and in fact, I can... Uh, copy that one more month to see what the forecast would be, uh, 110, what the forecast would be for a three-month moving average for the month of November. But let's test the accuracy of these um, forecasts against the two-month uh, forecasts. So again here, I want to compute error. Oops. Um, this is not absolute error. This is... I can write the formula so that um, I can compute the absolute error in one shot, but I want to go process, you know, with the process and show you step by step. So um, this is equal to error made, so 75 minus the 103.3 .3 is the error. I can copy that down for all of the months. Oops, I didn't copy it. And then I can take absolute value of them. Let me copy that. And then I can compute MAD. And that would be the average of all of these absolute errors. So the MAD is 27 versus 25. So the three month moving average on the moving average method on the average makes 27 units of error versus the 25 units of error um, that um, the two month moving average makes. This was um, a demonstration of uh, simple moving average, two month and three month for this particular data set. Um, I could compute um, MSE or mean squared error. I believe um, your book may call it mean squared um, deviation, MSD it may call it, but mean squared error or mean squared, I think, no, it is MSE, is what your book calls it. And uh, this would be error squared. And this I'm going to do for the three months, just to show you, for the three month forecast. So um, for the three month forecast, uh, we really get, we essentially have to take the errors made which was uh, right here for the three-month forecast, and square it. Repeat that process. Oops. Repeat that for all of the months, and then average them. So, of course, MSC is going to be a bigger value than MAD, uh, and the reason is because the error terms are squared. But you could use MSE, or mean squared error, as a measure of forecast accuracy. There is another method that your book talks about, and that is um, absolute error. So, percent error is what... Um, um, we can um, compute. And actually, I believe the formula that your book uses is um, mean absolute uh, percent deviation. MAPD is what it calls it. And the way you do that is you sum up all the uh, absolute error terms. So for the three-month forecast, absolute error terms are here. So I sum them up. And then I divide that by the sum of um, all the actual values that went into those computations. So it's for those terms, April through October. And 
Oops, I must have done something wrong in my formula. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me start over again. This is um, the sum of all of the error terms, absolute error terms divided by the sum of uh, the actual values for the months that we have computed error. So uh, 0.296, so approximately a 29% error um, is um, associated, um, 29, almost 30% error associated with um, the three month uh, moving average uh, forecasting method for this particular time series. When we come back in the next um, video, I will be going over um, weighted moving average um, and perhaps even single exponential smoothing. Thank you.